Beware of covetousness. Hi, I'm Craig Duck, President and Missionary of the Fellowship of Christian Firefighters, here with another Fire Ground Briefing. These short videos are designed for you to get into the Word and to grow in your faith. Today we're looking at another one of our commands of Christ. We have about 49. We're going to be in Luke uh, for our passage today. In fact, it's going to be Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And so uh, go ahead and grab a friend, grab your Bible, and let's dig in to the Word of God. So today we're talking about covetousness. Now you don't hear that word talked about much, but it is uh, something that the Bible talks a lot about. So let's get right to the command. Let's jump right in. Luke chapter 12, verse 15 says this, Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And so, you know, when I was first hired uh, back in 1986 with the uh, District of Columbia Fire Department, uh, we had to stand watch. And uh, it was interesting. We had a room for that. And um, the, the fire alarms would come in through communications and they would tone out uh, uh, two beeps. And uh, the next thing you know, uh, we would be off on a fire. Well, the, the watchmen or the person on watch had to be very careful, be ready to receive that alarm. Somebody could knock on the door. Uh, somebody could call in the telephone. Communications might might put it out over the air. And so you had to be ready to write down that information so we knew where to go and what the problem was. And 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 you pass that on to the driver and, and the uh, officer. But but the point is, you couldn't do it in a lackadaisical manner. Uh, you had to pay attention. You had to be watchful. If that alarm came in, then you had to take care of, of the business. Um, here, Jesus is encouraging us to have that same mindset of watchfulness um, as, as you would being a watchman, but you're going to watch out for greed. So let's take a look at that uh, verse that we're looking at, and, and I would encourage you to either uh, go to our app, and uh, the app is uh, Christian Firefighter Hub. We have this Bible study on there. Or you can go to our website, www.fellowshipofchristianfirefighters.org. And uh, we have that on the, on the web so you can have this in front of you and, and do this with your small group or your one-on-one -on -one discipleship. And so it's color-coded for you. And I love the color code system. It helps me to be organized. And, and so you'll see that there's some orange text there. Then he, in orange, said to them, in orange. And so if you're trying to be a student and look into it, well, who's the he and who's the them? The he is Jesus, uh, because we get that in context from the, the previous, uh, uh, previous verses. And the them is there is a person in the uh, crowd that is, that is called out, asked a question. And so Jesus is answering uh, that question. You'll also see that uh, uh, there's purple there. Purple indicates this is the main theme. This is what to be, uh, what to be mindful of. So even though we're looking at uh, be on guard or be watchful, uh, here uh, the main theme is life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Okay, and so it's not the things that you have, but it's the it's uh, uh, how you treat God and what do you do with God that that is uh, more important. So um, so let's go ahead and, and look into that. Let's start with a, a definition of of covet because we don't use that very often. Uh, so covet is the desire to obtain something for yourself. Uh, you don't have it, you want it. Um, and so you're going to make this as a, uh, um, as a, as a big desire. Uh, the desire could lead to a craving or passionate desire for something um, uh, for something, even if that something belongs to someone else. And so, uh, you know, if you've read the Old Testament and you're familiar with the Ten Commandments, uh, that is one of the ten. Do not covet your neighbor's stuff. And so, yeah, your neighbor might have a better, uh, um, a better truck or your neighbor might have a better house and you just, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that. that that's uh, not what God has to say. And, and so you'll also notice in here that there's no term uh, covet in here. It is in the in the Bible. The Greek word uh, for greed and covet is one in the same. So uh, we read from the NIV and that that chose to use the term greed and then uh, we also uh, could have used ESV or, or King James or New King James and that would have uh, 
uh, the term covet in there for you. So those are just some things to be to be mindful of. Um, the other thing is you don't you don't want to just take that one verse and then you know potentially if you're always taking just one verse you get it out of context we want to we want to read the the entire uh, story here it backs up a little bit um, we are gonna uh, read a little bit above and and this is what it says someone in the crowd said to him this is Jesus teacher tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me Jesus replied man who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator between you then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist of an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. And then Jesus go on to, to tell one of the uh, um, parables that people are, are familiar with these days. There was this uh, landowner and he had a bumper crop that year and he looked at his barns, they were kind of little, and he said, well, I need uh, bigger barns. I'm gonna tear these barns down to make sure all my new crop and it is going to fit in there and then God said to, said to them uh, you fool this very night your life will be demanded from you uh, then who will get what you have prepared for yourself uh, this is how it will be whoever stores up things for themselves uh, but is not rich towards God and so so it's just that parable that really drives home the point that you know why do you have all this stuff you know now it's also interesting you go back to the um, verse we're taking a look at uh, one of the commands of Christ there it says um, that greed can consist of many different things right so if you if you look at uh, it it says all kinds of greed so it's not just money you can be greedy for money it can be for possessions it can be for things um, you know and so uh, we are to be on guard for all kinds of greed let, let me illustrate it this way for you and some of you may have seen this illustration before, but it drives it home for me as well. Let's just say that this, I have a hundred foot of forestry hose here. Let's just say uh, this coupling, this female coupling here represents from the day we were born to the day that we die. And then let's just say that we stretch out this hose into eternity and the hose represents um, our life after we die, our eternal life. Why is it that we spend so much time and effort on this part right here, right? Trying to get promoted, trying to get uh, a bigger paycheck. Well, I want to be a chief so I can get over 100,000. Well, I want to uh, retire and then get another chief's job so I can be making twice as much. Or I want to get that truck, or I need to get to, you know, a second house or a third house or a bigger house or just whatever, you know, the latest techie thing. And we just concentrate so much on here, not even thinking a moment for here. God would call these those folks that concentrate so much where there's a burning desire to accumulate things, you fool, right? So that term harkens back to Proverbs. The, um, you know, Pro Proverbs is loaded with uh, the wise and the foolish person. And, and so that this sounds almost like a, a, one of the Proverbs, you know, you fool, your life is required of you. So it would be wise for us to, to do everything in light of eternity, in light of what God is pleased with you know one day we we are going to have to have an accounting for us we as firefighters or first responders should understand that that life is short we are never guaranteed another day this could be your last day on the earth and and uh, you would have to stand before god and give him an accounting and he's not going to care about your big truck your house or how much money you made he's going to care about the things that you said and did in the fire service that brought glory to him he's going to be concerned about did you grow in faith did you share that with others and so so we need to be focusing on that and not the greed um, or lust and and so it's it's interesting a couple other little tidbits here um in that verses 17 to 19, you hear the term my uh, used four times and the term I used eight times. So that person was definitely not concerned with helping others, but with helping self. Uh, you know, back in that day, uh, the rabbis did uh, settle disputes. And, and so this person considered Jesus a rabbi and he said, settle this dispute I have. Well, it wasn't because he wanted what was um, done to be righteous and, and right before God, it was because he wanted more money. Obviously, the settlement didn't agree with him, and so he wanted Jesus to change that. And so, um, so it's it's important that uh, um, 
that, that you don't focus on that, but you focus on God. Let's look at a couple other um, verses here. Colossians 3, 5, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Ephesians 5, 5, for this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater and has any inheritance in the, in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And then, and then James 4, 2, you desire but do not have, you kill, you covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And so, so these are some things to think about uh, and, and go when you're uh, in your groups and you're, you're talking with your groups. And, and so I'd be curious uh, on a couple of your thoughts and we could start a conversation here. Why are firefighters and first responders so interested in gaining material wealth? So, you know, we have some comments here. If you got this on YouTube, and uh, go ahead and share those comments. And let's, let's go ahead and start that conversation. And, you know, how can we better avoid the pitfalls of greed? And so, you know, share that. Maybe you have a verse that, that helps you out or, or uh, something uh, somebody said or, or told you. Uh, the application is quite simple. Um, focus on the things that uh, are important to God and stop focusing on selfish things, things that you may want. And so let's go ahead and pray. Our great Heavenly Father, we do thank you for today, Lord. You are great and you are awesome. Lord, help us to uh, apply this command of Christ to our lives. Help us to uh, be pleasing to you. Change those things that need changing and, and that we would constantly grow in our faith. And we'll give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. If you got this off of YouTube, please again put those comments in there. Share it with us. Hit the thumbs up. That really helps us out. And subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Uh, you can receive all of our uh, videos as they, they come out. And then you can share those videos with all your friends. And, you know, let's start a, a movement in the fire service to be more godly and uh, to do, again, those things that are, are pleasing to God. So, again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. May God continue to bless you as you daily walk with him. Goodbye.